Hey friends, so if you've watched my last few videos um, on my sleep study and all of my um, finding out that I have sleep apnea, um, just a few months ago I didn't even know what sleep apnea was. I had never, I've heard about it but I didn't know exactly what it was and what it, um, like what it meant to have it and Michael just realized he woke up early one morning and realized that I kept stop breathe. I, I was stopping breathing while we were asleep. It was like five in the morning, so he turned his phone on and started. I think he laid his phone on my chest, and you could hear me take deep breaths, and then I would stop breathing. So he shared that with our doctor, and our doctor was concerned that I had sleep apnea when he realized what was happening. He didn't. He sent me straight for a sleep study. And so I've been through sleep two sleep studies and realized that I have complex sleep apnea, which means that I have obstructive sleep apnea and I'm on the journey for weight loss. So that's something that um, I may lose when I lose my weight. The obstructive sleep apnea can sometimes be called caused for being overweight and it's no, no secret I'm overweight right now. So we're on a health journey and hoping to lose weight. Lost 11 pounds so far. Yeah. So, um, but I also have central sleep apnea, which is my brain doesn't tell my body to sleep, uh, to breathe while I'm asleep. And so because of that, they realized that I had to be put on a BiPAP machine, not CPAP, but BiPAP. And the difference in the two is a CPAP machine is continuous air flowing in and a BiPAP machine is a stronger pressure going in but it is not as strong going out and so with me being on a BiPAP I um, hopefully will get some rest. I've been tired in the afternoons I've got high blood pressure it runs in my family but my heart rate's been kind of wonky since last summer and they're telling me that this very well could be the reason so we're hoping that this fixes all that problem but I thought since I didn't know anything and I've done a lot of research but I haven't really found a lot of videos um, that I would do like a unpackaging of my BiPAP machine so that if you are wondering you know what is what goes along with a BiPAP? What is a BiPAP machine? Maybe this could help somebody that might be wondering and and going down this adventurous road like I am. This might this might be able to help somebody because with our videos, that's what we, you know, we do our adventure videos to hopefully help people that want to travel. Well, it's not just travel, but our adventures also. And this is, I would say, a pretty big life adventure for me to be having to go on a BiPAP machine. And especially with us traveling, my first concern was, well, we cruise a lot. We have a cruise booked in August. How can I travel with a BiPAP machine? I'm thinking that they're these big machines. My my father-in-law is on oxygen, and, and that's what I was picturing, was a big machine that's going to sit by my bed at night, and I'm not going to be able to travel. Well, that's not the case at all. Um, it's pretty travel-friendly, and I thought that I would just show you everything that comes with mine, and it might ease your mind if you might be venturing down this road that I'm venturing down. So I'm going to flip us around and let you actually watch as I set my machine up. So here we as go. As you can see, it comes in this handy little bag. Um, mine is a ResMed. Um, it has, it's kind of like a carry-on bag to me. It has a handle. Um, I got the Air Curve ST. I don't know what that means. Air Curve 10. ST. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I'm still really new to this. Um, but it has a pocket on the front, I guess, to you could put stuff down in there and carry it. Um, as the man that was showing us how to use everything, he told me that um, these are, you. I can carry it on a plane. TSA will allow this. Um, but it, it kind of, to me, looks like a little computer case. It's got a a strap that you can adjust so it's pretty long right now but I could make it shorter and then it has a handle to carry it by um, let me find the zipper so it zips around kind of like a little suitcase 
open it up. Here's all my paperwork that they gave me. Um, lots of instructions. The guy was really friendly in showing me what I have to do, how to set it up, how to take it apart, how to clean it. Um, that was one thing that I was really worried about, but um, I've got my, um, my book. Those hoses and all the instructions that go along with it. Um, and it's really, I like being organized, so this is pretty handy because like everything has a picture. This is where the cord goes, this is where my mask is stored, so all of this is together. Um, this is the machine itself and then the humidifier. I've got another zipper here. There's the hose. Let's pull the hose out. It's pretty long there. And then I've got more books. Um, now I'm going to be able to order things um, online and then they'll ship it right to my house, my supplies. So that's pretty handy. Um, but yeah, here's, I guess I can go online and they have an app so I can keep up with what I'm doing there, how I'm doing on my machine, I guess how I'm sleeping. I haven't really looked at anything. Y'all are looking at this for the first time with me. Um, well, that's a CPAP Air Mini. I did some research on the mini ones that you could travel with, but unfortunately I am not on a CPAP. I'm on a BiPAP. But yeah, that's pretty small. But mine is not that big. This is what it looks like. And it's not that big, so thank goodness I'll be able to travel with it. And then here's another book. It's got some information. Instructions, well, you know. I'm not one to like to read instructions. I like to be shown by by a person. So if he he was pretty thorough in showing me how to hook things up. So hopefully I won't have to dig into that instruction book. Um but yeah, it's it's got all these little compartments, so that's pretty handy, but there's how it opens up. So we open it up and here's the actual BiPAP machine. You can see it's not that big, pretty small. So that's pretty cool. And then we have the humidifier. So um, I have to keep this filled. He said that I'll probably, if I fill it if you're a cruiser, um, he told me that it would probably be safe to fill it not to the max because you never know if the boat is going to be rocking and you don't want the water to slosh out into the machine because then it's going to um, ruin the two-year warranty. So he suggested that when we're cruising to keep it at this middle line and that that should be fine to keep it there. But I can fill it to the max and he says that will probably last me a couple of days. Um, I have to clean this every two days and then I have to clean my hose every once a week. So he suggested baby shampoo to clean this so that you don't have any residue in there and just a, like a new toothbrush that you haven't used before. So um, yeah, but this is the humidifier so we have to put the water in that. And then this actually hooks on to here. like that. So you can see that's not very big. So I'm, I'm extremely happy that I'm not going to have something huge. Uh, this is something I'm, I am going to be able to travel with. I am going to be able to put into our motor home. But one thing that we've started looking at now and looking at our class A's is something that has a side, a side table that we're going to be able to sit this on because I don't want it sitting on the floor. So that is a thought that we'll have, you know, and looking for our class A. We'll need, I'll want something that I'll be able to sit that on and if you are an RVer and you're on a BiPAP machine maybe give me some ideas throw some ideas in the comments so that I can have an idea where to put this once we get um, in our class A but right now we I have a table sitting by our bed so it's not going to be a problem so here's the hose and we have this and this just hooks right let me see. 
right in there. Oh, that was very simple. And then to pull it out, you just pinch these and pull it right out. And so he suggested that when I clean this once a week, that I do it maybe in the mornings. And I put water with the baby shampoo in it, slosh it around throughout the whole hose, and then hang it upside down like this so that it drips and it dries out. But it actually, um, once the machine turns off in the morning, it continues to blow air in through the hose so that it dries it out. When he turned it, he did put it on me and tried it out, and I was like, why, you know, you turned it off, why is there air still blowing out? And he explained, well, that's so that it dries out your hose, and it's not just having water or moisture sit in there. And I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. You know, the last thing we want is some mold going up in my sinus cavity, because, you know, it gets mold in it, so that was, that was a good thought. So let me show you the, ma the mask that I chose. Um, they tried three different masks on me and if you watch my video of my second sleep my second sleep study video you can see the three masks they tried on me I'm very claustrophobic and so when she put the full face mask on me I could not handle it so I ended up going with just the nasal mask and I have the small this is the extra small I must have a small nose so this is the extra small pillow is what he called it but these just pop right off and let me show you I have the small and he said the difference is it might bother my nose not being used to it that says medium but it's actually oh this is a medium wait did he give me oh yeah okay well I've got different sizes so this is this is the small you can see right there it says small and this is the extra small but he said this will go farther into my nose because it is smaller the, the small will actually lay more on the outside of my nose. Why he gave me both is because until I get used to it, this might not be as comfortable um, being farther into my nose with it being smaller. So that's why he wanted to give me different sizes for me to try them out and see which one works best for me. But this one doesn't go too badly um, across my head. That was my problem with the full mask, is it came across the top of my head and this thing came up between my nose, over my forehead, and I just felt completely closed in. And I didn't think that I could handle that. So I think that I'll do better with just the the nasal mask, hopefully. We'll, just, we'll have to see. Um, and this is something that goes on the mask on this part, so that this, it's a silicone. Um, so that it doesn't rub my face this is it's more of a cloth so that it'll be more comfortable on my face because it does come across my cheeks um, and then this is my battery pack and this is where we plug it in kind of like a computer to me this is how my computer looks because you have to hook it together like that and then part will go into the wall, this part will go into the machine, and then we'll be in business. So that's that pocket. So let's see if we can get it hooked up here. Take out the cord, put them together. Um, this is when I need Mikey up here, but he's taking care of the girls because I had to work tonight and we wanted to get this set up so we can get to bed. But you know, I don't know about your little puppy dogs, but our puppy dogs won't eat when we're not here. So we have to literally sit down there with them while they eat or they won't eat. So that's what he's doing right now. Taking care of the girls. Take that off. So let's see. This just hooks right into here. There you go. Simple enough. And then we'll plug this into the wall. Hopefully tonight. I He said that it may take me a couple of nights to a couple of weeks to get used to it. But hopefully it won't take very long and I'll get a good night's sleep and I won't feel like I'm just going to crash as soon as I get off work. I, I teach K4 so I'm now all my kids are 5 
so I'm chasing 16 five-year-olds around all day and by the time I get off I'm totally exhausted and it's due to me not sleeping at night um I don't know how many times I stop breathing in the night right now I haven't been to the pulmonary doctor he's wanting me to be on this for a month before I go and actually see him but um apparently I stop breathing enough in the night that it's really causing me to not sleep very well if I try to open up this and put this on so hopefully this will help so let's get these on here oh yeah these are soft that's going to be so much better than just the silicone being on my face this side on. Yeah. Now I have a friend at work. This is just something she should she she suggested. My hair right now is pretty short. I cut it all off last last summer but I have curly hair and one of my concerns is my hair getting caught in the mask um, we snorkel and I made sure that I got something to go over like this part of my snorkel mask so that it doesn't catch my hair but my friend at work told me that her mom is on a CPAP machine and she went to the dollar store and bought her mom a wig cap and she wears the wig cap with the mask and that way it doesn't pull her hair um, I went looking for one tonight but I couldn't find what I think that she might have so I'm gonna ask her at work tomorrow to clarify exactly what she has but he um, the man that showed me how to work all of this he fit this to my head tonight and he told me that one of the things that wears your mask out quickest is when you have to continue to velcro and then unvelcro velcro and unvelcro so he said that what he suggested that to keep this where I can use it longer now I'll have to switch out the the pillows um, this part pretty often but the actual mask as long as I'm not velcroing and unvelcroing because that's what wears out fastest if I can get it to fit perfectly for my head then just slide it on don't unvelcro it every time but slide it on each time but I was going to show you let's see how you take these off so this just comes right out like that. So that's how I will change those. They just pop in, pop off and pop in. So very easy to pop those in and on and off. And then it's back on. So those I'll switch out. I'm gonna try the um, extra small for tonight for the first time and just see how that feels and it might be tomorrow I want to try them the small instead but we'll see trial and error is what it's going to be so um put these back in there so i'll be able to store those let's get her plugged in and see what happens okay so i've got my cord this plugs in there so i've got everything plugged in i've got to hook my mask together and this just pops together like this look at that I can even do it one handed it's pretty good so there we go so that's in okay let's get our plugged into the wall so in order to fill it, I have to push this down, and that just pulls out. So let me fill it with water. Okay, so I've got everything set up now. I went online and I um, got the app. I set up my account because you can um, set up an account, and I got that set up, and I put the app on my phone so it'll be able to tell me each day. I can check to see how well I slept each night, and um, my insurance on my insurance, I don't know if this is everybody's insurance, but my particular insurance, I have to show that I have used it at least four hours a night for um, 
20, I think it's 28 days a month. Um, so that's quite a bit. But technically, if you have sleep apnea, it's not just about the snoring. I, I don't snore. That wasn't my problem. It was the stop breathing. And that can cause stroke or heart attack. And so, and it's evidently causing my heart rate to be kind of wonky. Um, so technically, people with sleep apnea should be sleeping with their their CPAP or their BiPAP machines every night, regardless of how comfortable it is or whatever. So um, I don't have a problem. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to be comfortable and sleep with it. But I know it's going to take time to get used to. But I wanted to show you um, the app that I downloaded. So I'm going to flip around and show you that. So this is the little card that they gave me. And it actually had a QR code that I scanned and I was able to set up my account. So now I've actually got an app on my phone and I just stuck it right in there with my help, uh, my health apps because I have my Fitbit in there and my um, calorie counter that I use each day when I document my food. But um, yeah, it's going to give me information about how I slept and um, find out how well my therapy is doing. And then I also have this book, so this is what my machine actually looks like. And this is kind of some quick tips on what you can do with it. Um, this was the setup, which I've already done. I did that on the video. But this machine, one thing that I like about it is I am at a pretty high pressure. It concerns me, but um, I'm not going to let that worry me. I'm going to pray about it and not let that worry me until I go to the, um, the respiratory doctor. But... Um, since I'm at such a high pressure, um, he showed me that when I, I can set it so that it eases into that pressure and it's not just that continuous pressure blowing out and me trying to get to sleep. So he said to determine how long it usually takes me to fall asleep. Um, and that's hard telling because sometimes I just can't get to sleep. I'm on my telephone. Sometimes I lay down and I don't even remember coming to bed. So I'm just gonna have to work with that and see what works best with me. But I can set it, this this where this is showing, you can set it for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And what it does, it adjusts your pressure and it goes up a little bit at a time so that it's not me putting on my mask and all of a sudden getting all that pressure coming in at one time. And I think that's an awesome thing, but my whole machine is automatic. So... Um, there's settings that he went through and has already set, so I'm not going to have to worry about that. But, um, yeah, I'm going to, for tonight, I think I'm going to set it for about 20 minutes because I don't know how long it'll take me to go to sleep, and that way it'll ease into the pressure. And if I feel like if I'm not asleep in 20 minutes, maybe I can turn it back and set it for a little bit longer and just see how that goes. But, you know... It's going to be trial and error, so that's what I'm going to do for tonight. Anyway, um, I've got it sitting on my bedside table. This is my machine, so, um, sorry. Um, yeah, so we'll put the mask on and turn it on and see what happens. Um, one thing I did is I was filling it up, so if you've got one of these, be careful, because I didn't realize, I should have realized, but you can see my cord down there on the floor, and I'll have to rearrange that somehow so it's not just sitting there on the floor make it look nicer but um I filled it to the max which is what he told me to do and that will last me it should last me for probably two nights but I didn't realize the holes in the side so I poured it down on my floor had to clean that up of course you know but that's okay it's just water and I've got hardwood floors it's not carpet so no biggie but um yeah, now I'm going to try plugging it in, and or everything's plugged in and ready to go. I've just got to put the mask on and then um, turn the machine on and see how that goes. So this is the mask that I actually got. Doesn't she look all pretty with her hair fixed and her makeup on and her nice little jammies? Well, yeah. Looks like that should just be so comfy. I don't know. I'm not feeling like I look like that right now. And I'm going to be, I'm very vulnerable about this, but I'm going to flip it around and show you what mine actually looks like. Um, this is, like I said, a learning process, but 
Yeah, so here we go. So here I am. I feel like Snuffleupagus. <laughs> if you ever watch Sesame Street, you know, the little elephant. Yeah, that's what I feel like. But right now I'm just trying to get used to the mask being on my face. Um, I'm trying to breathe in and out through my nose because since I do sleep with my mouth closed, I, I breathe through my, my nose. That's why I was able to go with this mask, but it is feeling a little weird. Um, I'm trying not to feel claustrophobic because I can see it with my eyes and I can feel it on my head. Um, it's like not got my hair very comfortable. I'm going to have to tighten it a little bit, but um, I think I am going to try to find something like a scarf or a wig cap that um, won't get my hair all caught into it. Even though my hair is not that long, it's it's like in my hair, it feels like. So I'm just trying to breathe in and out. You can hear me breathing. Before I turn it on, just kind of get used to it being on my face and my nose. I'm not loving this, friends, but it's something that... God has dealt me this hand. I don't know why. And I'm just going to have to deal with it and figure it out. Um, I am I am excited that I'm still going to be able to travel. But um, this is just going to take some time getting used to. So bear with me. And hopefully this is helping other people um, that might be having to go through this by me sharing this. So yeah, let's see. I'm going to try turning it on a little bit now. Mm -hmm. 